Hello, everybody, and welcome back to First Draft Friday. I am your host, Alessandra Torre, with Authors AI, and I am joined today by best-selling thriller author Jeff Carson, who's going to be talking about juggling writing and life and all of the things that we deal with as writers. So welcome, Jeff. It's so great to have you. Um, do you want to just introduce yourself to the audience? Uh, yeah, my name is Jeff Carson. I write uh, the mystery thriller series, uh, David Wolf series. And another series that I just started also called the Ali Falco series. Um, and that's about it. Yeah. And just to, so they understand, are you a full time writer? Do you have another job? And how many books do you typically write a year? Uh, I'm full time writer. And I, for the last few years, I've typically written like one a year. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I'm looking to up. So, I'm like at two books a year right now. So I'm pretty excited about that. But I want to be at like three. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. And what I was the last that. part of the question? I can't remember. No, that was it. So I didn't know when you were no. talking about juggling life and writing, like if you, yeah, I didn't know if you have another job, if writing is your full time. But that's, yeah, that's what I. Yeah. Do. Yeah, exactly. What I want. Yeah. To and I think I can just launch into this because I mean, that question that, we kind of came up with this topic before this and I, and it was like, wow, it is a really good question. You know, how to juggle life and writing, especially if like a year I only came out with one book, you know, and I'm like, Absolutely. what the heck? Like, how do I juggle life and writing? You know, like, like it's really I, like I an existential question. I when I had another job, because then I really focused on yeah. when I had writing time, it is hard when you have kind of a whole day. So yeah, absolutely. Take us away. Yeah. Um, so I guess like I, the first thing I have been better lately. Um, the first thing I like to figure out is like, what I, what do I want to be juggling in the first place? You know, like, I think that's the most important thing that I've learned in my life recently. And um, my wife is a certified like life coach. She became certified like a few years ago. And during that time, there was all these people coming out of her class that needed like hours, you know, so I would get these like free coaching sessions, you know, from them and or like whatever discounted and stuff. And and now they kind of have like thriving businesses. And I and I still use these people a lot. And like one of the first things they'll do on like a big session of like four months coaching is like the first thing they'll do is they'll do like a values assessment, it's called. And you go in and there's this list of. I don't know, 50 or like a hundred words. And it'll be like adventure, you know, alphabetical. Um, I don't know. I don't know where are some other words. Dang it. Um, like adventure, <laughs> like creativity, uh -huh. uh, independence, stuff like that. But they're all attributes and of a person. Exact attributes okay. of life, basically, okay. you know, you know, um, family, and then just all these words. And so like, then there's two columns next to them and it'll be like value and action. So the first one, you're supposed to rate how you value that, you know? So like for independence, for me personally, it's like 10 mm -hmm. out of 10, like, and you're supposed to be kind of finicky with the tens, not just be using yeah. them all over the place. But that's like a 10, you know, like that's why I'm a writer, self-published, all of it, you know? it drives everything I'm doing. So I'm like, okay, so then the action is like, how do you feel you're acting on this? And, and I'll put like a 10 on that one. So then you keep going. And then like on creativity, it'll be like, well, that's 10 for me too. That's a really huge one. But I like recently I, on the last values assessment, I put a five on action and it was just weird that I thought that way, you know? And uh, I think a yeah, lot of us feel that way, so, you know, like it should be the most important thing, but yeah. it often gets to the bottom of the list. Right. Or like, or like what, what's wrong with what you're doing? Is there something else that needs to be added, you know? And so, yeah, you got to figure that out. So, I mean, that's the point is you find, you find these gaps where it's like a 10 and a five or a 10 and a two or something like that. And uh, then you begin talking with these coaches for months on end about all this stuff and, and break it down. And it's, it's good. And this, um, which leads me to the next 
thing I think that helps me juggle writing in life is like planning ahead. Um, I think I put that in like the, I wrote a little description for this event and I kind of like to bring in some elements of what I, how I write into how I live life, you know, and, and it, I think like the more I'm, planning just a little bit ahead and expecting what's going to happen is, is my, is something that helps me, but also, also is, you know, obvious is an obvious downfall at points, you know, where I'm like, okay, I need to know everything that's going on or else I'm like freaking out, you know? So wait, let's jump into that. Cause I know you're an outline yeah. um, from past conversations we've had. Yeah. So, um, so when you say you need to know everything that's going on and, and you want to plan, are you specifically talking about like, plot creatively story-wise or you're talking about like this is when I need to have the first draft done this is when I'm you know I have a deadline with my editor what what are you referring to when you're talking about planning and knowing what yeah I'll, I'll and I go through like little phases of life I feel like that I'll I'm talking about everything like uh I read this book called goals by Brian Tracy I don't know if you've ever heard of that but mm -hmm. it's just talks about like how goals are very important to know where you're going. And like this book says, like you're supposed to write down the goals every single day, like the 10 most goals, and then just have a, it's like a present, uh, like you, you act like you're in the present. So I write first draft of book number 17 by February 1st. Like that's, you know, literal goal coming out of my brain <laughs> every day, you know? And so, if I'm just slamming that in my brain every day and I'm like, okay, that's what I'm doing. Now I know what I'm doing. I got to carve out a chunk of writing today. And then I, my point of that values assessment is like, you know, I, then I have all these other things that if I just decide to write that book by a certain amount of time or by a certain time, I can just overlook all these other things like exercise, whatever, spirituality, family, uh, adventure I felt was a one a big gap in my life and sometimes I'll you know then I'll go on a big trip somewhere and then I'll be like all right I don't want any more adventure I just want to sit down and write you know so it's like it goes in phases um, but then I've gone as far as even like planning the next day in advance just sitting in my bed and writing down okay so I'm going to wake up and you know, eat, and then I'm gonna take the kids to school, and then I'm gonna meditate, and then I'm gonna go to the office, and then I'm gonna write and do five writing sprints, and then I'm gonna eat, and then I'm gonna go, you know, and then I like do that, and then just feel like the next day I just get up and execute, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And it just kinda, so yeah. can you talk, can you take us through a day? So do is that your typical day? Do you write in sprints? When you say you go to the office, is your office in your house or you actually leave and go somewhere? I leave and go here. This is the office of my actual, like my childhood best friend. He had like this extra room mm -hmm. and he was like, do you want to use this? And I was like, yeah. So I set this up as my office and I'll come in. So yeah, I'll wake up. Don't need to get into too detail, too much detail. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> no, the intimate details. <laughs> do six stretch. No, okay. Um, no, and then I'll take the kids to school. Yeah, I'll meditate. If it's good weather, I'll take a walk. Like I literally drive to this parking lot and then at the park and then do the walk and then come here. And are you thinking about a, your book? during your walk or are you just enjoying the outside? I mean, is it a mental break or is it part of your creative process with your writing? I think it's just a mental break and like a, like get my. Just like my clearing. Like primed. Like yeah. Clear. In between. Yeah. That's the wine. Yeah. Yeah. And then in, in a perfect world, I'll literally know what I'm about to write from the night before. Mm -hmm. And so I don't even have to think about that. Um, yeah, but that's obviously never, not always the case. Sometimes I'm stuck. And so hopefully that just gets me primed and gets the blood flowing and feeling good. And then I come in here, BS with my friend for 
anywhere from five to 30 minutes and then <laughs> hope, you know, and then, uh, yeah, then I write in sprints. That's the best way for me to do it. And did you ever write from your house? I mean, does it help to be in a different environment? Yeah, I think it helps me be in a different environment, but then I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll do sprints until like noon and then go eat at home and then just be home and then for you the stay. rest of the day. Yeah. So I have a little office in my house too. So mm -hmm. I'll do that. Yeah. I love the idea of you renting a room from your friend. Cause that seems like, yeah. I mean, it seems much easier entry level than like going and getting office space in a building somewhere or, or whatever yeah. else. But I also like the idea, like it's a simple concept, but for me, that's what I'm looking at right now is like at my house, I am not productive. <laughs> you know, there's right. too many distractions. Yeah. I think the act of me getting out of my pajamas and getting dressed and getting in my car and driving somewhere would help me. Um, yeah. But, it really does me. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Like I gotta have that. Yeah. It's just like everything mental when I get in here and sometimes like a lot of times nobody's here too. So I'm like, okay, well I can't BS. Let's just go. Right. Yeah. You know, and I'll get lost in it and then it's time to go for lunch and stuff. And hope, I mean, hopefully I can get, my writing done in the morning. That's what I try to do. But sometimes it bleeds into the afternoon a little bit. But um, yeah, I, I always try to, with the juggling question, I want to add those other things I'm juggling, like the exercise and um, like other creativity. Uh, I'm really I'm slacking on that, I feel like. But, or I need to just, lose that expectation mm -hmm. you know what i mean and just be fine with just writing i don't know how, how do what do you you said you feel like you're lacking in the creativity too what do you mean by that yeah i think it's because it's one of those things that um and i uh becca smine is a fantastic instructor if you ever have a chance to um anyone watching or whatever has a chance but she talks a lot about uh, introverts and extroverts and for introverts, which so many writers are introverts, like just being in your job, if, if you have a normal job you go to where you're interacting with people, like you're forced yeah. to be an extrovert kind of all day long. And by the time you yeah. get home and you have writing time, like you're, you are zapped like emotionally. Yeah. So then you're trying to often write from a creative empty well, because you just like, you just need to, be able to decompress and come back to normal. And I feel yeah. like for me, I spend all day in meetings and different things. And it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, oh yeah, I got to get in, you know, like 2000 words today. And right, yeah. I'm doing it in my chair, falling asleep at two, two in the morning, you know, because that's when my house is quiet and I have a chance um, to get to it. And it's like, this should be like priority one. Like I should be right this should be my number one priority, like you said, but for me, my F ability, what, what was the second category in that chart? There's like importance and then the action. My action, action yeah, exactly. Is like a two. <laughs> right, you know? and it should be 10, 10, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that you have um, insight into like the life coaching side of that. Are there any other things you've learned from that that you've applied to your writing or to your work-life balance? Well, oh gosh, I don't know. I mean, I think the values is like so huge. It's like, it's like the, the bedrock to everything. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm bringing it up. But like, and then it's just like, yeah, coming to grips with like, so for me, like my creativity, the reason why I think it's a five is because I feel like I should be doing like videos. And I don't know where that came from, but I feel like, you know what I mean? And I don't know why I keep uh -huh. thinking. Like you like would I, enjoy I doing it. I would doing, I would enjoy yeah. doing YouTube videos. Uh -huh. So I've done one, I've done <laughs> one, literally one video. And it was like so much fun. And like, I just remember, you know, just the editing, I'm just chuckling to myself, coming up with stupid sound effects. And, and then I'm like, you know, and then I, so I want, I want to do more of that. Mm -hmm. Writing, though, I mean, I just do I write because it's like I don't even think 
why I'm writing. It's just like, I have to write. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, I, under- like, I understand yeah. 100%. hundred like, percent. of course, writing is going to Tomorrow, be I would still write as much as I could. Right. At that point, it's I'd like be able family. to write all the time. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, it's like family, yeah, like family. Yeah, of course, I'm going to like hug my kids and stuff. You know, of course, I'm going to write. You know, of course, I'm going to take my kids to school or whatever. So, yeah, anyway, um, I have noticed like, interestingly that like the the part of the book that i'm in like the literal phase of the plot that i'm writing will reflect on my life like what i mean by that like is like the the midpoint is like this you know how it's like the mirror moment i don't know i think james scott bell talked about the mirror moment where um the character will look in the mirror and wonder can they do this? Can they keep on and do what they need to do to solve the problem of the book? And like, I'll come home and my wife will just be like, you're at the middle of the book, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, because I'm just like moping, wondering why I threw all these things, you know, these balls in the air, these plot balls. And I now I got to catch them all, you know, and figure out what the heck I'm going to do. Um, and then like at the beginning of the book, I'll be super excited and just, you know. Easily. Yeah, wrapped up and ready. Yeah. I always go through kind of a, a dip, yeah. a mental dip in the middle. Um, we do have a yeah. few questions. Um, one yeah. Facebook user said um, that they love to write in cafes. Their newest manuscript is being handwritten, so I can do that easily. And I go to handwriting whenever I get mentally blocked. It's much easier Ooh, really? for me to write like by hand whenever I'm, I'm kind of stuck. But um, another um, person from Facebook said, do you plan out multiple books or one book at a time? And how long do you plan out for each story? Uh, I plan out one book at a time. And I've always wondered, like, should I be planning more books at a time? But I always do one book at a time. So There's wait, your current reason. series, how, how many books are in that series or how many books have you written so far in that series? And do you know how many there will 16. be? 16 books in the, the main series. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how many it'll be. I don't know. Yeah, I don't plan on ending it. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, I don't plan. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how far I'll go. I, I know I want to branch out and do like another series. So I don't get into like the hundred yeah zone um how long do you plan out for each story yeah that okay that's like a major thing that's like uh i'll plan and plan and plan and plan and then at some point i'm like okay dude just start writing you know like it's i i you know i equate it to i play i used to play a lot of golf like if you're standing on the first tee and or a tee of a golf hole and you look down and you're like okay you plan out Mm -hmm. but you can't sit there and plan the whole time you got to actually play the course right you know and like um but i get stuck in that trap your outline pretty rigorously or do you i've been pretty do their own thing i've been pretty flippant with the outline lately um like I just get the main plot points, mm-hmm. you know, like the inciting incident, the uh, break into two, you know, point of no return thing. Uh, like there's always a, a question of like, why is Wolf on this case? You know, he's, why can't he just pawn it off to another one of his detectives? And, you know, so there's gotta be a reason why. And then the midpoint and then, you know, so I just get those main points. They gotta be pretty solid. Mm-hmm. But in the middle, I always doubt myself and I go, wait a minute. Oh, that's, you know, there's, there's no reason, there's no way this could logically work out. And then I'm, you know, back to trying to plan and, and yeah, it's a good question. In other words, yeah. <laughs> how long? Yeah. I don't know. No we answer. also would like to know. Yeah. Jeff also would like to know the answer to that question. Yeah. <laughs> um, perfect. So is there any other main points you want to cover before we, uh, and anyone watching, if you have any questions, don't be shy, um, pop them in the comments and we'll try to answer as many of them as we can um, in the next 10 minutes. Yeah. Don't be shy. Cause I'm pretty much out of what I do. Out of- <laughs> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no, but I, I mean, I, yeah, the bottom line is like, I think that the more I plan, the better I am. But at the same time, it's a downfall. You know, you got to back away from that planning. I feel like for me at some point yeah. and just dive in and just see what comes out. And it's usually better than what I could have planned by far. So. And when you, when you look at writing a book and creating a book, how much time do you spend in that outlining portion before it versus the writing portion? Like, do you spend the bulk of your time planning out what you're going to write and then the execution is quicker or. I try to do like a few weeks of planning. Okay. And then execute it at about four weeks or something like that, you know, for the first draft. And then, and just spitting out that first draft, no matter how bad it is and not allowing myself to edit. Stop. As you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, Elaine had a great question. She said, does your wife coach you? She will not coach me anymore. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a good question. But I can tell when she gets into the coach mode, like, and I, and I know I'm being coached and she knows that I know, but we just, and I'll just keep like, yeah. And then, you know, but I feel like this and, you know, and she'd be like, oh, that's, yeah, I, I agree. That would be very tough. And, I, you know, it's not a normal thing she would say to me. So, because if she's not in coach mode, she'd be like, well, just deal with it. it. Why are you, you know, why are you talking about this? Don't do it. You know? So like, I can tell when she gets into coach mode. But that's like one of the things I think that they learn is like that they're not supposed to coach their spouses. So she, you know, pawns me off onto other people, which is good too. Because then I, I don't know, I just like talking to other people in general at some point. Because, you know, we're writers, we just stare at our screens all the time. Or you don't, you talk to a lot of people, but I don't. No, uh, I think my husband has still not learned that when I talk about my plot issues, I don't want any advice. <laughs> like I don't want any exactly. or ideas. I just yeah. want to think through this and it helps to do yeah. that aloud sometimes and have some, but he's like, oh, the character could do this or that. And it's like, whoa, whoa. Like, like I, no. I, I don't want no. any, like you're, you're not helping. <laughs> like the right. Writer. Which and then he's like, why are you talking to me? I work with a co-writer. I just don't think I could co-write for that same reason. Oh, I'm with you there. Yeah. Yeah, I've thought about that deeply, and I don't think I can. Mm -hmm. But um, Another great question. This one's from Suzanne on YouTube. How much time do you spend marketing your books? And how does marketing, okay. that, just to follow yeah. that up, how do you fit marketing in with writing and, and as far as schedule and planning? Yeah. Um, as far as marketing goes, like, that's another thing, like trying to figure out what I want to juggle, I feel like, because it's uh, from the very beginning when I started writing, I've always been just kind of a little shy on Facebook and social media, like super shy, like not a little shy, just I just don't do it. So like people like in all these books were like, yeah, you've got to get a, you know, social media following. There's no ifs, ands or buts about it. And I remember just being like, Hmm. I don't know about that. Like I would go, you know, just pick apart the person who said that and be like, well, you know, that person's not necessarily doing that well or yeah. just as good as this person. And then I try to go find their social media and I can't find anything on social media. And so I'm like, so why did this guy do good? And this woman, you know, whatever, or like did Stephen King Facebook his way into writing? <laughs> well, I don't think so. You know? So Anyway, so my point is, I have, I don't market at all on, on social media. So I just do ads. So ad advertising is like, if you're spending too much time on it, you're usually just screwing everything up. So you kind of got to just let it run. And and even now I'm trying to pawn it off onto someone else. I'm, I'm working with someone else right now. So I can, because like my wife says, you know, do you want to be an ads guy or do you want to be a writer? And I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to be a writer. So <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Good question. And do you do Facebook and, then, and AMS or like what apps do normally? I just do, do AMS. Okay. Yeah, AMS. I've tried Facebook and it I, I probably need to have someone else who's not so reactive do it for me. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like yeah. I'm very reactive. I'll go in and I'm like, oh that's weird, and I'll tinker with stuff and then just screw it up. It just all blows up and then I do more stuff. Yeah, it's just the worst. But so would you say to return to Suzanne? 
to Suzanne's question, um, 20% yeah. of your time you spend marketing or do you think less or more? Jeez. Like I think probably less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Way less. I don't like, even know. Yeah. And that's, that's maybe like part of that, like creativity gap that I'm feeling is like, maybe I need to connect with my readers more with social media and do those videos for that reason and stuff like that. Um, I'm working on that. Yeah. Um, Linda said uh, that you mentioned self-publishing. How much time does that take up? Oh, like as far as like the, the literal like execution of publishing the book, it's not much time at all. It's just, you know, I have a guy who does my covers. I have a, I write the blurb or description. I do, I like to do all the, um, what do you call it? The creative for like the A plus pages and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I like, I like to tinker on Canva for that and stuff. Um, what about editing? Yeah. You said you kind of write all the way through and don't let yourself edit as you write your first draft. Is um, yeah. How much time do you spend in in editing? Does that do you do three or four rounds? Is it just one round of an yeah. edit? Is it months? Yeah, it's usually like three. It's like a month or two. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep it to like a month, month and a half now, mm -hmm. and that's me going through it like three times, and then somebody else going through it twice. Uh -huh. First time for line editing and the second time for just okay you know where's the commas the double the double he he's you know stuff like that yeah. and um back on facebook someone said do you set yourself a deadline to be done and i know you said you were writing like every day january or february 1st or something but can yeah. we talk through kind of your deadlines do you have a deadline for first draft a deadline for edits do you already know when you're going to be publishing these books? Are they up on pre-order? What, how, how tight yeah. is your time frame, and how much is it planned out? That's another good, great question. Uh, I yes, set myself a deadline to be done, and I, the last two books I've done pre-orders, and after this last pre-order, just the feeling I had throughout writing this book, and the, uh, you know, like if I got stuck in the plot and I felt this ax over my head with the pre-order, I was just like, oh, I'm never doing this again. I was like so angry at myself. And so I'm not doing that next time. I'm not gonna do it unless like, so what I'll do is I'll set myself a deadline for like a month ahead, just really go for that deadline. And if it pushes out, it pushes out, whatever. And then get to it. And then as soon as I'm done with that first draft and maybe I read through it once and I realize, okay, it's not ridiculous. You know, like there's no, glaring plot errors then i can put a pre-order date on it and that really helps me get through that editing mm -hmm. process with other people too like saying like hey this is the deadline you know for you too and yeah it's maybe not fair to them but i'm, I'm usually giving way too little time I, I feel like to my editors but it helps really get the process out and you know that's what i do at the end and moved. And that makes perfect sense. I, I've had publisher deadlines and pre-order deadlines hanging over me. And it's like a weight off your shoulders once they're gone. But other authors, they need that. And that was another thing I, I learned. Yeah. Like it, there is a certain type of author. And so you, you're either this type or you're not where you need the deadline. And, and a, actually, I've found that I am like that in terms of if I don't have a deadline, it'll take me a year to write a book. And I yeah. hate having a deadline. And I hate that pressure. But it's the only, yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I'll like take my dear sweet time. And then two weeks before the deadline, I'm a crazy person for the next two weeks. And but, you get it done. But then it's done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. So, so that yeah. is the big main question that I'll be thinking about while I go through this next book is like, am I that person? Is that why I've gotten two books out last year? Yeah. Three basically books out last year. So yeah, I need to think about that. I yeah, I hate time. myself when it's happening and I'm, you know, and I'm stressed out and wild. But it like like you said, um otherwise I have a self-published book that I have no deadline on and um and it's, it's in the back I'm drawer. In, I'm in 18 <laughs> months right now. <laughs> yeah, without okay, yeah, pushing yeah. it. So, um yeah. So, it, 
they can be good and bad. Um, it looks like we are out of time. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you for your fantastic questions. Thank you, Jeff, for this great content. It's been Thanks so great to me. have you. And if someone's interested in reading your books, what book should they start with? And where can they find that book? Uh, my first book was called Foreign Deceit. And it's at Amazon. Mm -hmm. And you could start with that with the David Wolf series. Yeah. And if you can and get through that probably, one, then you can get through the whole thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I do want to say a Facebook user just said, I guess I need to quit my day job so I can spend more time writing, um, hearing about having nothing left creatively. And I will say um, the suggestion on the class that I took was if you are that type of person where at the end of the day, you're just like emotionally zapped. Maybe then instead of trying to write every day, write just on the weekends, you know, um, or on your off days and then write and kind of four to six hour blocks of time, longer blocks of time, you know, um, but yeah. when you do have that kind of creative energy. So, um, and, and that's uh, what I did for my first six books. Yeah. But is go it? Ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say thank you to our team. Visit um, jeffcarson.co to learn more about Jeff and his work, Foreign Deceit. So thank you all. We'll be back in two weeks with another First Draft Friday. If you um, enjoy this, please like and subscribe to us. And if you have not yet met Marlo, she is our artificial intelligence that can help um, read and give feedback on your book in just a few minutes. And you can check her out at authors.ai forward slash Marlo or authors.ai will get you there too. So thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you to our audience. And we'll see you guys in two weeks. Thank you.